Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be telling you guys my experience this past year being a clinical laboratory scientist. If you didn't already know, I got a bachelor's degree in biology. After that, I started taking prereqs for nursing and I took a HESI exam and got into a nursing program. I then decided that I didn't want to do nursing and I took a position as a clinical laboratory scientist. I currently work in a molecular diagnostics lab and we do clinical research testing, so I do not work in a hospital setting. And and this upcoming May, so May 25th, officially will be my one year at this position that I'm at now. So if you want to hear about my experience and what I think about this position after a year of being in it, then keep on watching. So one thing that I really value with this position is that I'm continuously learning. I train in a new workstation every two to three months or so. We offer two different types of testing. One is more advanced than the other and has two different types of, you know, workflows. So I've been training in both actually over this past year. When I first started, we had to set goals and my goal was basically to just to get a grasp of the more advanced training as far as um, our more advanced procedure as far as you know knowing what goes on and then complete their basic training I say basic it's not really basic but you know what I mean the, and I want to say it's less complex because they're both very complex but the less advanced so I use air quotes with that but that was my goal and I've actually started training in both and so I'm very happy with that. And with those different trainings and different stations that we do, you know, I learn more about the different processes, cause and effect of the different steps that we do. I'm always learning new skills and sharpening old skills. So you're continuously learning in this position, which is something that I really was looking for, not only in specifically in this position, but any job that I want to go into within the healthcare field, I want to be in a position where I would be continuously learning about whatever I was doing at the time. So not only has my knowledge and skill improved hands on with the lab, but you've also learned about different equipment I learn how to do different maintenances make different reagents whether they're cleaning reagents or actual things that have to be mixed in or used during testing so that's one thing I really like and I didn't I guess fully expect to be doing when I took the position but I really like it so with learning you know different reagent creations and procedures and regular lab work I like that the more you learn the more independent you become and the just the more knowledge you have in what you're doing. And so that actually leads into my next point is that I work a lot of the times very independently. So we have a shared office setting and you know, everyone can talk to anyone. We all have our own desk, but we are in the same space. So you can do different types of things in the office, but in the lab, you're typically in the room by yourself. Another person sometimes can be in the room with you, but they're likely doing a different type of procedure so you do work independently a lot of the times but we do work together as well so obviously when you're learning different procedures or a new procedure I, I should say you are going to shadow someone and then they will teach you you know along the way and watch you and make sure that you are approved to start doing things by yourself so once you get that approval then you're off however even though you're approved or signed off on something new even if you've been signed off, you know, for six months at that point, if you have a question, someone's always there to answer and help you out. They encourage you to, you know, to ask questions or look it up yourself. A lot of times some questions can be answered just by looking up the SOP that corresponds to whatever you're doing. And it's also up to you to manage your own time. And so when you come in the mornings, you wanna make sure you're looking at the calendar and planning out your day. So sometimes my manager will come up to me and ask me like, you know, what my plans are for the day. It's very rare that someone's gonna to come to you and say, okay, today you need to do X, Y, and Z, take your lunch at this time, make sure you do this, this, and this, and this. That's not really how it goes. You look at your work day, you plan out what you have time for, you prioritize what needs to get done first, so a lot of the times it's up to you to prioritize your day and what needs to get done first, how long you think it may take you, what stations you'll be working in. You're typically assigned a station, but you can always pick up a station if you're done and you see someone else be backed up. So that's what I mean by like, you know, what stations you're working in. So it definitely tests your time management and makes you, like I said, independent in that way. Buster, go. Go. So yeah, if you know you're gonna have time for X, Y, and Z, and you wanna do that first, and then maybe you wanna take your lunch at 12 one day, and then you wanna get back to doing this, and you wanna help out here, 
completely up to you. As long as you are using your time wisely, no one's gonna be breathing down your neck all day making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know? The other thing about my office where I work is we have a very small staff. So we have less than 15 people in the office a day. And even those who do come into the office, they don't always work directly in the lab every time. So we do have a really small staff, but with that, everyone's very down to earth. It's easy to talk to people. You know, we can joke around and have fun. Managers come and talk to us. Directors come and talk to us and joke. You know, everyone's really down to earth and very friendly. So that's one thing that I really enjoy about having a small staff. It makes communication a lot easier, whether it's, you know, just regular everyday talk or whether you're asking a question or have bringing up concerns about you know the lab or whatever it may be it's a lot easier to talk to people when you feel like you know them better because you have a chance to connect because you know you can only talk to the same people every day so that is one thing about having a small staff on the flip side of that it does get um very hectic when we have a lot of samples coming in at once we have you know sometimes you can have 30 blood tubes come in a day and that's a lot of work to do and you know, a lot of reporting needs to be done within the next couple of days. And sometimes we have batch samples and that's 100 samples coming in for one project at one time that needs to get done and report it in a timely manner. So that's, I would say that's the only like downside of having a small staff is when you're just slammed with samples and reporting needs to be done. Um, it can get very overwhelming, kind of cover stations and make sure your station is covered as well as doing regular office duties like filing and scanning and answering emails and doing, you know, just doing everything. So that's the only, I could say, like I, I guess the negative about having a small staff. But other than that, I really like having, working with a very limited amount of people. Like I said, as much as we joke and as much as we are friendly with everyone, at the end of the day, it is a serious environment. You know, we are working with real DNA and real samples. We are working with the DNA of real people. So you want to make sure that you're trying to minimize the risk and mistakes that you make. Of course, everyone is human and mistakes do happen. The severity of the mistake can, you know, cause a lot of stress. So it does suck when you make mistakes, but they do happen. Even sometimes our robots make mistakes. So um, you want to make sure that you are following the procedures like you're supposed to be doing. You're double checking your labels, your samples, your reagents. You wanna make sure that you're mixing the right things and not putting something where you're not supposed to or you're using the wrong volume. You have it set to milliliters instead of microliters. So you wanna make sure of all those, you know, those tiny details really do matter in this position. Um, you wanna make sure that you are transporting things correctly so you minimize, you know, the. The chance of you dropping something. A lot of the times mistakes can be corrected in the sense that things can be redone. Sometimes things have to be adjusted and documented and you can proceed forward. However, there are a few procedures that, you know, if you do make a mistake, either you have to start over and hope that you still have some sample left. Worst case scenario, have to reach out to the doctor, sponsor, whoever sent it and ask them to ask their patient to come in and provide more samples. So that's like worst case scenario. Of course, you wanna be open about your mistakes. That way you can either fix things or mediate things as best as you guys can as a lab and move forward. So again, you just always wanna make sure you're double checking and being very detail oriented in everything that you do. Doctors, patients, researchers, they're depending on us to report accurate results for their patients so they can determine diagnosis, treatments, et cetera, et cetera. Overall, after a year of being here, I can definitely say that I really enjoy this position and I'm so excited to keep learning and growing and seeing where this position takes me, what company I may move to, who knows? As of right now, I'm definitely very focused on learning as much as I can and just enjoying the journey and going from there. It's definitely a job that I feel, you know, kind of falls to the background and doesn't get recognized as much but I mean it's an important job I'm so happy to have it and be contributing so I have no regrets in deciding to you know stop going to school and just transition into this full-time position so that's it guys that was a brief summary of my year as a clinical laboratory scientist if you guys found this video helpful make sure you check out some of the other videos on my channel where I talk about my position show you some things and also tell you how I got to where I am right now also I know I'm going to get this question in the comments because I get it all the time. My next sit down video will be a why I decided not to go 
to nursing school. That will be my next video. I promise it'll be up before you guys know it, so be on the lookout for that. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know if you're in school or working and how this past year has been with for you with everything that's going on. I would love to hear about it and chat with you guys down below. Of course, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.